Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Finally, MTV decided to show this freaking episode. Um, Y'all could have showed it last week. The holiday fell on, what it was a Thursday, right? So y'all could have showed this episode either Wednesday or Friday. I don't understand why we had to wait a whole seven days. But anyway, we're finally here and we're gonna do this video. So let's get right into the recap. So apparently MTV is once again playing the episodes out of order because the last episode they said up oh, we're through we are no longer doing homeschooling and here they are in episode six still homeschooling so jade has some big news for the chat girls and that news is that she has now gotten her real estate license she's a hairstylist i don't know what you girl girlies are calling um the person that does your hair now it's not a hairdresser i'm dating myself calling it hairdresser but um she does hair and now she also has her real estate license you know i have nothing but respect for a woman that knows what she wants and goes out there and gets it okay what is sean doing um is he working is is he gonna get a job one day or is he gonna go to college or trade school or what what's Sean doing while you're over here with two damn jobs? I don't I do I don't quite understand how you're working two jobs or you're gonna be working two jobs and your man has been broke and uh, unemployed for years. So Jade is here with her client. Her name is not even important. I'm really sorry to tell you. You're never gonna see her again. I promise. You're never gonna see her again. So she's talking to this client about her real estate license and the fact that one of her friends is, let's just act like they didn't say last week that she was already back in school. Let's just act like MTV played these episodes in order. Jade is telling this lady here that one of her friends knew of a school or whatever, and she's gonna look into it for Chloe. Kate and Tyler have a discussion about the fact that Veda, she has sensory issues so when she's in like a classroom and it's too loud this is so familiar to me when she's in a classroom and it's too loud she gets very angry caitlin was saying that she spoke to the teacher and basically they've agreed to give veda an iep now i'm not gonna fault caitlin for not knowing what those letters stand for i have a lot of experience with ieps so i know what it stands for and i know what it is without her explaining what it is an iep is an individualized educational plan it's a plan okay and it's a plan basically for your kid to get whatever they need whatever accommodations they need like for example if they have adhd they need more time if they need physical therapy or if they having speech issues they need speech therapy all of these come inside of an IEP, which is again, an individualized educational plan. So that's what Veda is going to have. Kate says that Veda is five years old and she still doesn't speak that clear. So the occupational therapist calls Kate and tells her that Veda is going to be evaluated at the school. So we're here with Janelle. I can't believe I'm recapping scenes with Janelle again. It's, it's crazy. Anyway, she says that she promised herself that she would not impulse house buy or whatever. So she is, even though she liked Florida, she's going to check out Las Vegas. Why? Because her man friend lives there. This is August. Alrighty. Janelle, can you stay single for five mother freaking minutes? The ink ain't even ain't even touched the paper of the divorce papers yet. Now the story has changed from a friend she was kind of romantically interested in to now, um, he may have already been, I just didn't know, but she's saying, she's referring to August as her manager and she wants to look into opportunities business-wise in Las Vegas. So Janelle talks to August about the case, which I will edit that out. You know, the divorce and all that other stuff that she has to deal with. August says to Janelle that, hey, I have this opportunity. August is trying to hook her up with a business where they can grow marijuana. They can, you know, cause it's legal there in Las Vegas. So I'm gonna tell y'all right now, they're talking a lot of business with this business. And I'm gonna tell you something. Business conversations are not interesting to me. I'm gonna need y'all to keep this off camera. Do this crap in an office off by yourselves. Please do not make every single scene with Janelle 
be y'all sitting down talking about this business because I'll be honest with you, that's boring. Janelle basically wants to be the face of the brand. She wants to try it out, make sure that the product is good. And she's very glad that David is not there to be a freaking obstacle in her way. We're here back with Brianna and she's talking to the fake group chat. It's fake, shut up. Anyway, she's talking to them about the fact that she's been MIA and she lets them know about Roxanne's problem. Brianna gets on this phone call with Jade to talk about her mom and, you know, her dealing with the realization that, oh my goodness, my mom is dealing with it. Child, I didn't know it was this bad, y'all. Brianna lets Jade know that Roxanne has entered into treatment and she says, Brianna says that back in the day, her mom struggled with H. Brianna is telling Jade that she spoke to her grandmother and she found out that Roxanne has been on methadone since she was pregnant with Brittany. And y'all didn't know that she was addicted? I'm not doubting you at all. Sometimes addicts have a way of hiding things. You would think that everything's normal, everything's fine because they know how to put on a good face with you. But that is freaking crazy. Brittany is 32 years old, so she's been doing since Brittany was in the womb, which is, you might as well say, 33 years at this point. I'm shocked. Jade was shocked. Everybody in the audience watching this video, I'm sure you're shocked. So Jade was like, and she didn't tell anybody. And Brianna's like, her aunt and her grandmother knew, but they didn't tell her or Brittany. Brianna says that this is killing her on the inside and she's going to a really, really dark place. And Brianna says that she doesn't want to go through that in front of the kids. So Jade explains that there's going to be a lot of different emotions that you go through when you're dealing with somebody who is an addict. So Jade says that it can have, you know, that situation can make you feel like you're crazy, like you're literally insane. But when you have support of like-minded people who have been going through the same thing, that'll let you know, hey, I'm totally sane. I'm not the only one thinking this. Jade suggests that Brianna attend a group of folks who have addicts as family members, which is Al Anon. So we're here with Mackenzie and Cassanio. Cassanio's name took a million years to get right, but I met him on Teen Mom Family Reunion, and since then I have it. Okay. So Cassanio's mom is coming to visit and Mackenzie says that she has met her before. Mackenzie met Cassanio's mom when they were in Jamaica, but that was without the kids. So she's coming to stay at their house and this is when she's going to actually meet their kids. And I so Mackenzie says that Cassanio's mom, her name is Angie and then her mom's name was also Angie. And she says that, you know, Cassanio's mom is like, the most important person in his life. So she's nervous and she wants to impress her, of course. So Cassanio says to the children that his mom is extremely important to him and that here we're from Jamaica and in Jamaica, they're big on respect. So make sure you be very respectful. Make sure you keep the house clean, you know, just keep it together and keep it right. Cause, um, you know, we want to make sure that we welcome, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm adding this part here, but I'm just saying, you know, he's just making sure that his mom, when she comes, that she's comfortable and that they behave. I feel like there was some trepidation in your voice, um, Mackenzie, when you just said that I am praying to God above that these kids behave. She didn't say it like that, but she might as well have, okay? She, Mackenzie says that this is going to be the first time that her, that um Cassanio's mom is going to see him being a father to kids who are not biologically his miss angie is so sweet and so nice she came in and gave all the kids hugs and she's hugging Mackenzie back with jade and she's making moves okay she's a working woman she's not playing with y'all ma'am i literally watched you start from scratch i remember you doing cosmetology school you graduated you got yourself a spot you started doing hair and here you are miss thing and you're already closing on your first house so why did you marry sean i'm just saying anyway so we're going back in time to when chloe was not already in school so she's having her assessment for private school and um yeah 
that's what's gonna happen so we're back with kate and tyler and this is the day that they're going to get the results of the evaluation for veda so they went in and mtv y'all don't give us this we can't go in here no cameras allowed type situation y'all didn't um tell us that but that's what happened they went in and they came right back out and kate is very upset as you can see she's upset at the findings of this evaluation so so kate is super upset and she really she says that she really didn't want to cry in front of all these people so understandably kate has found out i guess i don't know she, they still at this point have not really said exactly what the results were but obviously there's a little deficiency somewhere and kate is very upset about it so tyler's trying to help her understand hey you know let's just learn her limitations and how we can help her don't see it as something that is a deficit so Tyler's trying to understand what what is it that's really upsetting Caitlyn and he's he's like is it the fact that um how she's going to be dealing with it emotionally is it the change part he's like it's okay you know most people don't like change it's fine you know girl I will say you know when people I feel like they've chosen terrible husbands I let them know and in your situation you know, Tyler, <laughs> sorry, I've been, re I've been recapping this show for a million freaking years, okay? And um, I need to hurry up and put my elastics back on. Anyway, I'm, I'm, guys, I'm about to get my braces off. But anyway, I will have another video about that. But anyway, um, you chose a very good man, okay? You didn't even know when you met that little boy in high school, whenever the hell y'all met each other. That was a long freaking time ago. You had no idea he was going to grow into be this man who's going to be supportive of you and your children. So I love that for you. Cause I really like y'all. I do. Out of this whole franchise, you guys are one of the couples that I really do admire. Tyler is saying that, you know, she's made a lot of progress. Do you know how difficult it is for a five-year-old to regulate themselves? So Tyler says, I wonder how much better I would have been if we got myself, like if his parents got him evaluated the way they're doing their child. He says that, you know, back then, and I can tell you the same thing, and we're not even, we're like a completely different generation, but it's the same exact thing. Back then when I was younger, they would say the, the, the kid is a R word, you can figure it out. And, or they would say, oh, this child has behavioral issues. They would take them and throw them in special education. When Veda encounters something that's super loud, for her, um, I think my kids would cover their ears. For Veda, she doesn't cover her ears, but she gets very, very angry. Can't process all these noises coming at her at one time. So Brianna says that her mom left in a hurry. So she's gonna take her and the girls and go over to her mom's house and clean up a little bit. They're cleaning up, they've cleaned up, and Brianna tells Brittany that she got an email from their mom's facility about Al-Anon. They sent her a Zoom link. They're gonna be doing a meeting like every Tuesday at home. And she's asking Brittany if she wants to be involved. Brittany says she doesn't know if Al-Anon would be beneficial for her because her issue with her mom is not so much the addiction, which, okay, girl. Anyway, she says it's more of the way Roxanne treats her. But her addiction is the reason why she's treating you that way. Brittany's like, as long as she don't touch that stuff again, they good brianna's like what if the reason why she's treating you like that is what i just said what if the reason why she's mistreating you is because of the addiction Brittany believes that the reason why her mom treats her the way that she does is just strictly based on the trauma brianna's trying to encourage her to join the meeting because she believes that it can be beneficial for both of them so Brittany says that she feels like Brianna is struggling a lot more with this than she is. Brianna, just do your thing. If Brittany doesn't want to do it, don't try to force her into doing it. I don't like August, okay? I don't like him for you. I'm really sorry. You know, I can just sense these things. I don't like him for you as far as romantic partner. Just leave him your manager if, if that even works out, okay? And um, I don't like the idea of a male always having to be in control of your money. Like... Did you not learn anything? So Janelle's gonna have a meeting with the camp people and I don't know how much of this I can say. Janelle says that she hopes that the meetings go well with that company so that she can move the heck up out of North Carolina. They're about to have this meeting about the and girl, I couldn't care less, I'm so sorry. So they prepared food together, everybody, and they're sitting down eating. And Mackenzie says that we've prepared for this for a long time for Miss Angie's visit. So now Cassano is here with his mom. They're off at this place called Kef, Kes, I forgot girl, anyway. So they're sitting here eating and Cassano is talking about the transition from him being completely by himself to now being in a house with three different children. So Miss Angie 
asks Cassanio if he sees Mackenzie as his future wife. Cassanio says that he has no doubts about Mackenzie. They're both doing life over right now. And Cassanio says that he would like to create new memories with Mackenzie in marriage. Cassanio says he really doesn't know when to propose and his mom says make it soon. So Jade is back and she's with Sean and she picked up Chloe and the assessment went well and she says if everything goes well she should be starting her new school soon. Now, So now they're in an eatery and Sean lets Jade know that he's thoroughly impressed with her. You should be impressed with anybody with a job. Just one job. I mean, seriously. A few days later, Jay gets the results of Chloe's assessment for the private school. Chloe passed. I'm back with Janelle's easy scenes to do because I ain't saying too much. So she's obviously on video chat with Brianna. So Janelle lets Brianna know that she's hanging out in Las Vegas and Brianna asks, were you able to hang out with August? Um, Janelle says, yeah, you know, we were having meetings. And Brianna says, make sure that you're doing this move for you and your kids. Not, this is just me speaking. This is me speaking. Not you and a man, okay? Well, Janelle says that she knows that David's gonna be pissed off if she moves to Vegas. And Brianna says, well, basically that's his problem to, to deal with. August is gonna be in every scene now because I'm tired of talking about him, okay? I'm tired of not talking about him, but I'm tired of him being in every scene. Anyway, they discuss how the meeting went and Janelle thinks that it went great. This is a black owned company. August asks, how is your mom gonna feel about you moving away? And um, MTV, don't think we forgot. Um, We're not getting Babs. Like, we're not getting her on any of these. We're not getting her on any of these episodes. Damn. I was kind of looking forward to her coming back on the show. Janelle says that she feels like Barbara might try to follow her. And August asks, um, you miss your mom, right? And Janelle says, yeah, but she feels that Barbara checked out of being her mom when Jace was born. Yeah, because she had to focus on raising Jace as a mother because at the time you weren't doing what you were supposed to do. So I kind of understand why she checked out on you because you checked out on Jace and she had to be there for Jace. August says, I know you in a way that people, other people don't know you. Now we're getting into this lovey-dovey scene with August and girl, I do not, literally do not care. You've known August this amount of time and he's always been there for you. And it's the same story with a different guy's face. I mean, God, I'm over it. So Brianna is going to be doing her Al-Anon meeting via Zoom. Brittany was not trying to hear that. And Brianna says that she's really been struggling with all of this um, with her mom. So she's really excited to be joining the Al-Anon um, meeting. She says, thankfully, Brittany did decide to join her. So an hour later, they don't even tell us they're not going in there no more. We just got to assume that we're not going into these meetings, okay? Because MTV, I guess they ran out of budget. They don't want to tell us on these black screens anymore. Brianna says that meeting was not what she expected. Brittany thought it was boring. So Brianna says that in the meeting, they talked about the fact that Roxanne's going to have like a meltdown probably every month. Brianna says that when she sees an addict, she doesn't think of her mom. I didn't expect her to say this, but Brianna says the al meeting actually made her feel worse. Brianna says that she thinks that it instilled in her that this actually really is happening to her. And Brianna admits that she's not ready to accept it. Now we're back with Kate and Tyler and Tyler's mom, child, it's been a million years. I don't remember your name. Okay, don't make me look it up. I don't remember. Okay, I was just, you know, just put it in the comment section what her name is. I forgot. Anyway, they're on a video chat and they're discussing the findings about Veda and so basically, I just don't think they gave us super clear um, as to what she was going through or what she was di not diagnosed. She's not up to a diagnosis yet. But as far as the evaluation, I don't know if they kept a lot of that back because they were just trying to hold her privacy. From what I gathered, they evaluated her and found that she has sensory issues as far as the noise level, which we already discussed before they even had her evaluated. There's a little corner in her school called the quiet corner or whatever. And Kate was telling... Tyler's mom that she you know she likes it over there. Kate tells Tyler's mom and I tried to find her name but I couldn't find it so sorry to tell you that they're gonna set up a little corner in Veda's room where she basically can have peace and she can have that quiet corner for herself and now they're setting up the little corner. Kate says that you know parents need to be involved and she wants her child to feel good and be okay. Mackenzie 
I hate to say it, but you're growing on me, girl. Okay, you seem like a, a, a nice young lady, okay? You really do. You really do. You seem like a nice young lady. Um, are you still boring? Um, you're less boring. I will give you that. You're less boring. Nobody's perfect on these reality shows. You guys are going to see some peeling skin. Like sometimes you're going to see some hair out of place. It's just like my videos or any other YouTuber on this platform. Sometimes we're not perfect. You know how many times I filmed a video and I had like, I just ate and I had something in my mouth. I was so mad about that because you can't edit that out. So, you know, I, as a recapper, have learned to look past those little imperfections because Lord knows I've had my own issues. She's sitting here talking to Miss Angie, telling her about she's glad that she's there. And Mackenzie admits. Why would you admit this to her? But anyway, <laughs> Mackenzie admits to Miss Angie that her kids are wild. Mackenzie says, I hope you still love them by the end of this trip. Mackenzie says that the children were very close to her mom before she passed away. So when they moved off on their own, she's like, okay, it's just me and you guys now. Now she's, she's continuing to talk and saying that she told herself that she was going to be single forever, but then she met Kess. Mackenzie tells Miss Angie that, you know, I told Cassanio from, from jump, I am a single mom. I have kids. I don't have any help. So Miss Angie says that Cassanio told her about it and she has left the choice up to him. It's his choice. Miss Angie says, you know, I love you for my son. You make him happy. And I, you know, see you as my daughter-in-law. And so it's all good. You guys got the green light. You got the green light. I ain't going to sing it. I ain't going to sing it. Mackenzie says that Kessa's mom is very motherly. Says that she's very happy that Miss Angie will come in and take on the role as, you know, their grandmother. Cassanio says, yeah, we're not actually going to go get food. So Cassanio says to his mom, how does it feel going with your son to go look at rings? Miss Angie, and I'm going to say Miss Angie, darn it. Or do y'all want me to say Angie? No, I can't just say Angie now. I got to say Miss Angie. Now I got to stick to the Miss Angie now. I'm so sorry. Okay? That's just how we do it. This is how we do. But anyway, Miss Angie says she feels good. Cassanio says that Mackenzie's going to die when she finds out. So now they're ring shopping. Excuse me while I go cry. So they're asking the jeweler um, about rings and they're looking at rings. And mom has already said, Mackenzie's going to like this one. Get this one. But Cassanio says he really wants to talk to Mackenzie's dad before he proposes. So you went to the jewelry store to look at rings and then decide you'll come back to look at the rings again. I know MTV put you up to that, Cassanio. So I'm going to be working on some stuff. Make sure you check out my posts. I'm asking you guys, what is the next video you want? Not the next video, but what type of recap do you want to see on this channel? After I am done catching up with these two shows, they're going to be married at first sight. We'll be coming in the next couple of months and I don't want to put too much on my plate. But every now and again, I do like to throw in one or two bonus videos during the week and i want to know what type of recaps y'all want to watch okay anyway guys thank you so much for watching my channel make sure you like comment and subscribe and i'll talk to you guys in the next video bye